In this video, we're going to look at using measured moves as profit targets. Stay tuned. Hey guys, a very warm welcome to you. Right, thank you for joining me. And if you're a subscriber, appreciate your subscription. If you're not, maybe consider subscribing. If you are into the markets, you like your trading, your forex, your commodities, your indices. Anyway, in this video, we're gonna talk about measured moves. Now, I don't really subscribe to a lot of the textbook kinds of stuff for this. There's loads of stuff out there, as is with all these types of trading stuff, guys. Go and have a dig around if you're really into measured moves. But my take on this, based on 15 years in the markets, based on trading the markets, in and out, intraday, all sorts of different time frames, different kind of bear markets, bull markets. You know, we tend to find little patterns that aren't quite as obvious, but they're still always there. And so a measured move to me is using the current conditions to extrapolate and have a good estimate on where the market could go. Now, some people use complicated formulas and all sorts of you know in-depth stuff about this, but I'm a pure price action guy, right? I like to see um, what the market's been doing and I like to say, right, what are the conditions? What's the volatility like? What's the range been like? And how can I ex use that information and evidence to superimpose onto a future. Now, of course, we never know what's gonna happen. That's why risk management trumps everything. But sometimes, you know, guessing where we're gonna put our profit target uh, is challenging. You know, do we just kind of grab a little bit and run? Do we have opportunity for a big trend day? You know, do we have a bit of both so we can scale some out? You know, that, that becomes the challenge when we're, we're taking a trade. Whether we're swing trading or day trading, guys, these are all relevant on whatever time frame. I Part for, well, that one's actually a bit of, bit of both, but yeah, they're all real relevant on all these time frames. So uh, let's have a look and let's kind of see what we're talking about here. So first one is uh, a flag. So standard bull flag, bear flag, you know the score, you've got the pole, you've got the flag. And then the idea of the measured move is that you can measure the distance of the pole. So that obviously didn't start, we don't get in the real world or start here, but it's where you know you can sense the start of the move. Obviously, you know that comes from either a range or comes from something, but there's always really an obvious start to it where you get the extended candle, you get the volume, that's the pole, then you get the flag. Now you could extrapolate and say, hey, the distance of the pole, which is A, and by the way, I've used just A as just a, a variable letter here. Um, a here, you could extrapolate that out and say, right, well, I'm expecting that to go further up the upside. Now, in the real world, this isn't always the case because often it might do a little flurry, then have a deeper pullback before going against. So you might sit through some pain on it, uh, or I say pain, I'll sit through some pullback, um, but very often you are gonna get this one, which I'm gonna put as B. Okay, you get the distance of the flag. Now, this is gonna depend on obviously how tight and high the flag is. The higher the flag, tighter the flag, the more likely it's gonna be A. But you can start to at least have some ideas. So you can see obviously with this, guys, it probably kind of points out, jumps out straight away. If you're trading multiple contracts, multiple size, you're gonna scale out into that to cover some risk off the table and look for extended targets over time uh, to point A. So that's like using a measured move and understanding and extrapolating out based on how big that was. Now, some caveats. It depends on how this happened. It depends on where this is in price position. There's loads of other things. If you want to cat before we kind of decide whether we're going to pull the trigger on something like this, or our filters, our trigger, momentum ignition process, all this kind of stuff. So we're just keeping it kind of broad for now so we get an idea. So anyway, number two, guys, is range. Range is, uh, this is a pretty simple one. Width of the range, basically, from high to low is A. Uh, and the measured move would say that if we broke out to the upside here, we're expecting move up to the same distance. So if that was 100 pips, you'd expect 100 pips move to the upside, or similarly to the downside. Now, uh, obviously, again, sometimes we don't get this, but it's a good I, it's a good kind of benchmark, right? We're not saying strictly for every single trade we do, we're gonna put a hard limit in there and it's that or nothing, uh, because that's just gonna be a losing proposition over time. However, it gives us the order of magnitude. We can say, listen, this is the volatility, this is the range of the market, this is the rotations that it's offering in the current conditions, whether that's over multiple months, whether that's over multiple hours, whatever it may be, this is what it is, so if we expect Expect that to continue, which it doesn't always, of course, that's why we have the risk management in place. If we expect it to continue and we get a break and we get evidence that we're gonna get a break, then using that as a guide, we could say, hey, we can expect it to come here. Sometimes it's gonna rip even higher. Sometimes it's gonna just carry on and on, and sometimes it won't even get there. So it doesn't it just depend, but at least you know, you're not just kind of snatching a couple of ticks on here, or you're not right way up here and, and something ridiculous. At least it keeps you in the order of magnitude you expect. 
Um, and it's the same kind of for placing stops as well a little bit. You can reverse this on all this stuff on its head and go, well, if I'm fading failed patterns, then where would I kind of look to have my stop? So perhaps if you were fading, uh, going off piste a little bit, but hang, hang with me. Uh, let's say you're fading this and let's say it kind of did this and started to reverse and you thought, well, actually, I think I'm going to break to the downside. Um, then maybe you, you'd be saying, okay, well, I'll use, a, I'll use a stop there because if it's a fail pattern, it's not going to quite get there. So again, you can at least frame your trade a little bit. I feel that you know, a lot of times we go in a little bit too blind and we don't really know what the market conditions are. We force what we want on the market conditions. So the measured move is a good way of aligning you with the current volatility and range. All right, number three, guys, is the mean. So mean is, that could be a view app if it's intraday. That could be a moving average if you're swing trading. But often you'll get markets that will cycle around a dynamic level like a moving average, like a volume weighted average price. And I've gone into a lot of depth actually with this specific one uh, before in a video. I think I've talked about view app. If you type in view app into the search you probably find it um, but the distance away from that if it's a rotational type environment you know swing trading uh, obviously day trading if you view up but swing trading if it's a moving average you know very often that point from the extreme to the to the to the mean it, it can be extrapolated out the other side so you get this kind of measured move now this isn't strictly measured move and some of the measured move aficionados are probably going to go oh that's really not right but you know just from pure observations are not even labeling as a measured move i see that happens very very often so something to watch out for if you're trading you know can i say you're trading for a mean reversion you've seen that you've seen this it's about the same it starts to turn it's probably worth a nibble it's probably worth a go because if you've had that kind of move and it's, it's almost similar and in the same conditions nothing really come out to change it then you know putting a stop under that level or a little bit extended the level and looking for a move back to the mean isn't a bad play um, if you get the right conditions okay number four guys is the trend so in the trend this is a little bit different because some people will label it in different areas and and you know what i think that's absolutely fine because i think you've got to look and see what the market's telling you again you can't force your will onto the market some people will say it's from the low to the peak you know some people will say it's from the peak to the trough and they're all valid you know you have to look and see what the pattern is and then go right well i've had two occurrences of that you know let's say you're here and you've had there to there there to there and you've got that number number of pips whatever that may be 200 pips if you're swing trading or maybe 35 pips if you're day trading and go right well i've seen that there's some symmetry to this pattern where if i'm taking a buy here and i still align with the long where's my target going to be well I, i'm not going to have a target as of 10 times that move if I am, I'm going to be prepared to sit through a lot of different moves and pullbacks and all sorts of swings and stuff. But if I'm expecting it to drive up on the next move before it rotates, then it makes sense to keep the target in the order of magnitude of the drives you've already had. Similarly, if I'm positioning a stop, you know, if I'm positioning a stop, maybe I'm going to say, OK, what's that distance? Well, OK, why don't I use that if I get a good entry kind of here? Because I know that the pattern's broken if we do get that kind of move back. So again, it's aligning yourself with the conditions and using this theme of what the market's telling you to then extrapolate out and go, okay, well, that would be a sensible place for a target for this trade of this move. I'm looking at this, this chunk of move. That'd be a sensible place to put a stop and aligning yourself uh, with that. Anyway, guys, those are kind of four ideas uh, for using measured move to pick your profit targets. If you like this kind of stuff, a thumbs up is much appreciated. Take care, whatever you're trading. Bye-bye.